afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me for today's session with Britannica Digital Learning, really focusing on lesson planning within Britannica School. I'm going to go ahead and give everyone about another minute or so to log in and get situated. And then from there, we'll dive into today's session just to be mindful of time. All right, so it looks like we have just about everyone here, so let's go ahead and get started on today's session. Before we get started, I first want to go ahead and put a face behind the voice on your computer and introduce myself. My name is Courtney France. I am your education consultant with Encyclopedia Britannica. Prior to joining um, Britannica staff, I re... Wow. scratch. We're going to start over. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me with, uh, for today's session on lesson planning with, within Britannica School. I'm going to go ahead and give everyone about another minute or so to log in and get situated with their audio or any other functions within Zoom before we get started. We'll get started right at 4.01. So again, I'll give you another minute or so to get situated and then we'll get started. Just be mindful of time. All right, so it looks like everyone is logged on and situated, so we'll go ahead and dive right in. But before we start today's session, I first want to put a name and a face behind that voice that's on your computer. And my name is Courtney France. I am a former educator, specifically in grades three through five, with focuses on English language learner education, gifted education, and everything in between. From there, my career has brought me to Britannica to work as your education consultant for all of the Eastern region. I am your resource for any questions you have about using and implementing Britannica products within your classroom or media center. So if at any time you have questions about any of the resources I show you today or any of the other resources you have access to on um, through Discus, feel free to contact me at cfrance at eb.com. That is my direct email and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have or share any resources that I have available to assist with your implementation. So before we dive into some of the content of today's session, I quickly want to go over a few housekeeping items. During today's webinar, you'll want to make sure that you keep your webinar in full screen view just to make sure that you can follow along and see everything that I'm sharing. You'll also notice that I have automatically muted all participants. All participants have been muted so that everyone has the best user experience and to make sure that there's no background noise or feedback that's causing any interruptions into today's presentation. And then because of that, if you have any questions or you need to reach me at any time during today's session, feel free to use the chat log for any questions you have. Just know that if I don't answer your question immediately, I will be answering it at some point during the session or at the end during our question and answer session. But let's go ahead and dive into our session today by first talking a little bit about Britannica, who we are and how we came to be where we are today. We recently celebrated our 251st anniversary, so let's dive into this video to see how we expose students to be good consumers of information. 250 years ago, the world was a very different place. There was no electricity, the United States didn't exist, and we hadn't discovered Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto. But three guys, Colin, Andy, and Smelly, were on a quest to define the world and bring trusted information to your great, 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 great grandparents. They wanted to create a new encyclopedia to give everyday folks access to the knowledge of experts. They launched an 18th century crowdfunding campaign, and in 1768, Encyclopedia Britannica was born. Over the years since then, 250 to be exact, the world changed massively, and Britannica engaged experts to explain how. Having people at the cutting edge of their fields contribute to Britannica meant that the information people were reading wasn't watered down or altered, but sometimes sharing all that knowledge got us into trouble. Some people were outraged at the detailed information we published. But even through turbulent times, our commitment to spreading truth prevailed. And curiosity didn't just survive, it thrived. 
Britannica pioneered technology changes by being the first encyclopedia to use color images to create the first multimedia encyclopedia. And shortly after, Britannica became the first encyclopedia on the internet. With the birth of the internet came lots and lots of sources, platforms, and information. But we were quickly reminded that not all sources are created equal. We saw that truth needed a champion, and we also found that our commitment to rigor, research, fact-checking, and editing was not just relevant, but sought after. Today, Britannica has entire teams, products, and partnerships to fight false information. We provide accurate, trusted information to over 140 million students across the world to ensure that the next wave of knowledge pioneers have access to tools that engage them in discovery. Now, more than ever, everyone needs to have the tools and know-how to distinguish fact from fiction. We need as many people as possible to get behind us as we champion truth to make sure that the next 250 years are as innovative and filled with real knowledge as the last. Join us, because how you discover matters. I hope you were able to enjoy that video and learn a little bit more about who we are and our history. But one last thing I want to review is our mission. And our mission over the last 251 years has been to ignite curiosity and spread the joy of discovery. We all know that people are naturally curious, especially our students. But as educators, we need to encourage them to be good consumers of information. So today, what we're going to be focusing on in our session is we're going to quickly discuss what quality lesson planning looks like. From there, we're going to discuss what Britannica School is. We're going to dive into a tour of all three levels of Britannica School, and then we'll wrap up with an evaluation. So let's go ahead and start by talking about quality lesson planning. Lesson plans provide you and your students with a clear sense of direction in the classroom. The quality of your lesson plans will in great part determine how, you, um, how efficiently class time is used and how much content your students learn each period. So the more clear your lesson plan is, the more class time that you have to really make sure that you're honing in on skills that your students need, as well as making sure that your students can actually um, maintain and understand a maximum amount of content within that time. And that really all relies on the quality of lesson plan that you're really creating before you dive into the actual lesson you do in front of your students. When thinking about lesson planning, it's important to know that the lesson plans don't have to be lengthy. The main thing is to make sure that they contain the main elements of the lesson. They're really meant to guide your instruction so you can maximize class time. So some of those key components of a lesson plan, and again, we're not looking for the length in the paragraphs of information. Your lesson plan doesn't need to be a novel, but it should include these key components and make sense to you so you're ready to deliver your lesson. One of the first things you want to make sure you cover in your lesson plan is any and all materials you need. That includes student materials as well as teacher materials. You'll also want to think about any learning objectives. At times, you might want to have this written in teacher talk, I like to call it, but also have it written in student language so they can understand and have it digestible for them. You want to make sure that you activate your students' prior knowledge. This could be through a hook of the lesson, a quick video, maybe even connecting to a lesson you did the prior day. Then from there is when you're going to start diving into your direct instruction. This is a great, a great place to start listing the steps of your instruction. Something that comes directly after that is allowing students to practice that direct instruction or that concept of the day. Then you really want to make sure you have a direct closure and wrap things back together, back to that objective, back to that prior knowledge, and back to that direct instruction. And then last but not least, assess your students' learning. So today we're going to be focusing on Britannica School as a resource that you can use to collect reliable resource, resources to embed within digital lesson plans. So let's go ahead and first start by talking about what Britannica School is. So when you start in Britannica School, you'll notice that you will have three levels of online resources. You'll notice these levels are coded in two different ways, either elementary, middle, and high, which is what I'll show you at the beginning of our session. And if not, you'll see one, two, and three. So level one correlates to elementary, level two, middle school, and level three, high school. You'll also notice that students and teachers have a variety of content that they can engage with, from articles and illustrations, videos and images, and everything in between. 
Students and teachers can access Britannica School on any device at any time, as long as they have access to Wi-Fi or some sort of data plan. And um, last thing to note is that Britannica, Britannica School is safe, reliable, and up-to-date. And on our tour today, I'll show you how up-to-date some of our sources and um, articles are within Britannica School. One last thing, um, piggybacking off of how up-to-date and reliable some of our resources are, I quickly wanted to share the editorial process that all of our content goes under. So not just our articles, but also our images and videos, as well as our primary source documents. Anything that we post online goes through this cyclical process where our subject editors and our fact editors and our copy editors and everyone in between are working together to continuously make sure our information is updated and relevant for our students. So let's go ahead and dive into our tour of Britannica School and some of the resources within that can really be used to support within lesson planning. So what you can do is you can access Britannica School through Discus and logging in with your Discus password. That will allow you to access Britannica School directly from that homepage. From there, once you access the Britannica homepage, you will be brought to a page that looks like this, where you'll be able to navigate between the three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. Let's start by going to the elementary homepage. And before we dive in, we're first going to do a search on the elementary homepage just to see some of the content that is available to us. So let's do a search on George Washington. Within my search of George Washington, you'll notice that students can begin searching on three different levels at the top of the screen. Remember level one, correlates to elementary content, level two is middle school, and level three is high school. So if students want to engage with more content or more rich content based off their academic ability, they can do so right from this elementary homepage. But you'll also notice on this left-hand side, students can engage with a number of resources from images and videos, their dictionary con um, definitions, magazines, and web's, web, web's best sites, excuse me. Let's quickly dive into images. When you open an image, you'll notice that students can um, manipulate and use this image in a number of ways. They can first filter through and see all of their image results by using these arrows on the left and right hand side of the screen. They can also search their image results using this window pane on the right hand side to scroll through any of the other images within their search results. Once they find an image of their liking, they can favorite that um, image to their personal account within My Britannica and save and organize it for later use. I'll show you that a little bit later once we dive into the lesson planning. Then you can also print and email the image, cite the image, and get all four citation styles and copy and paste that directly into your works cited. Get a direct link to that image to share out, share to Google Classroom as well as to Google Teams. When we're looking at our videos, students can do a lot of similar things with their videos as they can their images. As you can see here, a lot of these functions and features are the same. But some things to point out within the video is that you have the transcript below so students can follow along, or teachers can copy and paste this, print this off for students to follow along as a separate document. So as you can see there, as I just tested and played that video, students can watch the video, but also it automatically comes with closed captions so students can follow along with the audio. But also a couple buttons to actually just one button to point out at the bottom of this video screen is that you'll notice students now have the option to download the video directly to their computer as an MP4 format. So once you click that video, students can save it to their Chromebook or their iPad or whatever device they're using in class to have access to that video and embed into presentations or any other PowerPoint that they might be working on in class. From there, let's move on to our dictionary definition. We might not have one here for uh, George Washington, so let's do a sample search on just a dog to get a dictionary definition. From here, you'll notice that all of our definitions come from our sister company, Miriam Webster. This is a great resource for students to really um, develop their vocabulary and their academic language and content. Also, students can hear the pronunciation of the words that they're searching just by clicking on this audio box next to the word. From there, let's go back to our original search on George Washington. And let's continue searching our magazines. 
These are journal articles and magazines that are provided by EBSCO that students can engage with and really get that firsthand touch if it's a primary source or if it's a direct um, firsthand account of something related to George Washington. Something to notice about all of these magazine and journal articles is that some of them have the text PDF version next to it. That allows you to access a PDF document and save the PDF document. If it does not have PDF version, you'll notice that that text is just embedded into our interface um, within Britannica School. And then last but not least, we have our web's best sites for students to expand their research outside of Britannica and make sure that the sites they're going to are reliable and up to date. And then we will come back to our lesson planning section um, in one second once we review some of the functions and features, but we'll dive right into lesson planning. But the last thing I want to show you within our search feature are the articles. When you are in the Articles tab, you'll notice this button below that says Lexile Filtering is an option for you to choose. When you click on Lexile Filtering, it will now expand to allow you to toggle the, toggle the Lexile range of all the articles. But before you even manipulate either end of these um, edges of the toggle bar, you can notice that right next to every article, you will see that the Lexile level measure has now been added. Let's go ahead and dive into this George Washington article. From there, you'll notice at the elementary level, when it comes to article usage tools, students have a lot of similar usage tools that they had at the, ele um, not the elementary level, excuse me, for the videos and images. Some new ones to point out include the plus and minus button that allows students and teachers to increase and decrease the font. This is great if you plan on sharing this article to whole group, or this is great for students that need that visual um, remediation and increasing and decreasing the font. And then also you can have this article translated into over 80 different languages. From there, below that, you'll notice you can still share to Google Classroom, Google Drive, and Microsoft Teams. But now I really want to focus on the teacher button that's below within the article. This is a great resource to utilize as your lesson planning and embedding some of the curriculum standards or some of the Lexile measures within. As you can see here, the Lexile measure is listed above at the top of the screen. You can also filter out through a number of standards. You'll notice on here, it automatically will um, filter to Common Core state standards, but you can always change to your specific state standards by simply clicking on the correct state that you um, are in. So let's go ahead and choose US state standards. From there, we'll type in South Carolina. We'll choose our subject, our grade level. And then from there, I'll be able to see all of the standards or all of the South Carolina standards that correlate to this specific article to really assist me with my lesson planning. So now let's go back to the article. A couple other things to point out when it comes to differentiation within your lesson planning is I know some of the differentiation strategies that I used for some of my students that struggled with reading comprehension and reading fluency was to attempt to chunk the text. So you'll notice here that this text is automatically chunked to make it more digestible for some of our students that need that extra assistance with reading comprehension and reading fluency. You'll also notice that students can also have the article read aloud to them. So this might be something that you add to your differentiation and modification piece by having that specific student have that article read aloud through headphones. But let's go ahead and listen to the read aloud. Another great tool or material to embed within your lesson plan is our Quick Click Dictionary. This allows students to engage with vocabulary content and words they might not be familiar with. So all they have to do is take their mouse and hover over the word that they um, don't know. From there, they'll double click on it and it will pull up a dictionary where they can see the definitions as well as hear the pronunciation. And also see the Spanish translation if there is one. From there, another great differentiation tool to embed within your lesson plans is noting that students can toggle between two different reading levels at the elementary level. They can move between the elementary and middle school level and make sure that they're able to adapt the article into their appropriate level for their learning needs. But from there, let's go ahead and go back into our homepage on um, Britannica at the elementary level. You'll notice on here, and if we have time at the end, we'll dive more into some of these Explore tools, but I definitely recommend you diving into some of these Explore tools on the homepage if you have some additional time to see how students can engage with content. 
But let's go ahead and dive in back to our middle school level and quickly see some of the similarities and differences between the middle school and elementary level. When I open the middle school homepage, I'm going to conduct my same search on George Washington. As I'm conducting my search, you'll also notice that this homepage has been updated to be more age appropriate for my middle school level learners. I'll go ahead and press enter for my search on George Washington. Again, you'll notice very similar functions and features where students can toggle between the three reading levels at the top to see their search results. They have their images and videos, dictionary definitions, magazines and journals, other um, websites that they can access. Now you'll also notice that students have access to primary sources and eBooks where they can um, engage directly with that first hand account of the event. You still have the option for lesson planning, which I'll show a little bit later. And then that Lexile filtering toggle is available so you can see the Lexile filtering as well. But let's quickly dive into the George Washington article. One thing to notice is how updated the article is when it comes to the content. You'll notice that the text isn't just copied and pasted from the elementary level. It is a completely new article that's been revised and updated to be um, relevant for our middle school level learners. You'll notice that all of our functions and features have moved over here to the upper right hand corner, as well as our related and feature tab have moved to the upper left hand corner. But one thing to point out, again, a great differentiation piece within this article is if you have a middle school level learner who is really struggling with this text and this text might be too high for their ability, from there as you're scaffolding their learning and working them up to this level, what you can do is move them down to the elementary level text by clicking reading level one. You'll notice what that does is it brings the elementary level text up into the middle school interface so they're not sticking out like a sore thumb in the class as they're doing research at the elementary level, even though they may be in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade. So again, students have that option to continue to toggle through those reading levels and really get the text that is age appropriate for them. But now let's go ahead and go back to the middle school homepage by clicking on the word middle in the upper left hand corner. At the top, or not at the top, on this screen, you'll notice that students can engage with a number of different content and resources. Again, we might have some time at the end to review this. If not, I definitely recommend you diving into some of these resources on this homepage. And then one of the last things I want to show you are some of the new and updated articles, and you can see how updated some of these resources are, and also see when there are brand new articles added to our resources within Britannica School. So now, last but not least, within our tour of Britannica School, let's go ahead and see the high school level. I'm going to navigate to that main Britannica School homepage by clicking on the words Britannica School in the upper left hand corner. From there, I want to click on the words high to navigate to the high school level. Again, you'll notice that this high school level interface has been updated to be more age appropriate for my high school level learners. But let's go ahead and dive into our search. Again, we'll do George Washington. From there, you'll notice again, students still can filter between the three grade levels, or excuse me, all three different levels. Also, they have similar content from articles and images, primary sources, as well as that lesson planning and Lexile filtering. We'll go ahead and dive into our article so we can see the similarities and differences. Again, you'll notice that the text is richer to be um, academically challenging for our high school learners. You'll notice all of our utilization tools are still in the upper right hand corner as well as our related in images and videos tab has moved to the left hand corner of the screen. But now let's go to the high school level homepage, where again, you can see some content for students and teachers to engage with, um, as well as that new and updated articles um, as recently as of today and, and yesterday. If students want to engage with more new and updated articles, all they have to do is click the see all button and they're able to access all of the new and revised articles based off the date that they were new and revised. So for example, you can see that Amy uh, Klobuchar recently announced that she was dropping out of the Democratic um, presidential race. So you can see that we recently updated her, her article to update um, and match that current event that recently happened. So now let's go ahead and pause. Now that we've seen all of the content within Britannica School, I want to pause and see if there are any questions about any of the Britannica content we've seen so far um, before we begin discussing lesson planning. So if you um, have any questions, go ahead and take the time to drop that in the chat log, um, and we'll go ahead and answer those now before we dive into lesson planning in My Britannica.
All right, it appears that we don't have any questions so far. If you are typing a question, um, continue typing and feel free to continue to send um, that question to the chat log and I'll make sure I answer that as you press send. But if not, to be mindful of time, we'll go ahead and continue on with our tour. The first thing I want to focus on before we dive into lesson planning is really focus on My Britannica and setting up a My Britannica account. This is going to be a great resource to use because it is going to be your resource that is going to assist you with the lesson planning um, functions and features within Britannica School. So you'll notice that in the upper right hand corner of any of the home pages you're on, you have the option to sign into My Britannica. When you click in that button, you will go ahead and enter your information if you already have an account. So you'll see here that my information has automatically populated. If you don't have an account and you would like to create one, you'll simply select the button create an account below. And that's where you'll choose your own username, type in your password as well as record an email address. That is an email that is optional for students, so students do not have to enter one and is required for educators. Just know that we're not going to be using this to spam you or send you any additional information. This is only for you to have um, access to your password if you ever forget it and have those instructions sent back to you. So now I'm going to go ahead and log in to My Britannica. And from there, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner that sign in button has now expanded into My Content lesson plan browse and sign out so the first thing i want to show you is the lesson plan browse this is a great place to see some other sample lessons that teachers and edit, um, editors have created within um, britannica school you can filter through these lessons by grade level as well as by specific subjects that you teach or are planning on conducting that lesson on so this is a great place to get started to dive into some lessons that already um, engage and use some of the britannica content Another feature that expanded at the top was my content. And so earlier throughout our tour, um, you might remember me mentioning the star or that favorite button that allows students and teachers to save or, or not save or, favorite content to their account. If you click that star, it will actually shade in very similar to the star that you see on the screen and save it to the account that you um, that you have logged into. So you can see here the most recent saved article that I've saved is crustacean. And all of these articles are in order by which I've saved them. But I can also further organize these articles and resources into resource packs. All I have to do is create a new resource pack here by clicking the screen button. I'll come up with a name for the resource pack and then click add. So let's say I'm doing a resource pack on my unit four, which is all on animal classification. From there, I will click add. This will open me to a new page where I can add more details and information about the animal classification resource pack. So if I would like to select a subject, I can. And I can further expand that subject into specific categories. Oops, there we go. From there, I can also select a grade range as well as enter a description. So if I would like to enter a description, if this is just a resource pack I'm sharing with my students, I might want to just enter instructions on how to utilize these resources within the resource pack. So I might say, review the articles and images attached for the upcoming quiz or for the upcoming lesson plan or the upcoming lab, whatever description that you want to use for your students. And then from there, you'll have um, the option to go ahead and upload content within this folder. So I know I'm working on animal classification, so I want to go ahead and add that resource that I recently favorited on crustaceans. You'll see now that once I click that add button, it's added to my pack. I can add more content depending on my recent favorites. I can also upload my own PDF or doc, um, Word documents, as well as browse other content within Britannica School. From there, I can go ahead and save the changes to the pack or begin converting this to a lesson plan. So let's first save the changes to this pack. And as you're lesson planning within Britannica School and using different resource packs within your lesson, and let me go ahead and open a resource pack that I have some um, information on. From there, once you save it and add the information within the resource pack and that content, if this is something that you're using as an additional material for your students to dive into, you might want to add additional instructions right next to each additional resource. So you might say, 
review this article and determine the main idea and key details or record any vocabulary words that you don't know. Or you might go ahead and dive in and ask specific questions. What is the meaning of the word um, cultivator as used in this passage or anything like that? So you can add all of those questions in the resource pack and then share it directly with your students by clicking the share pack button at the top. Here you'll get a unique link where you can share this and embed it in Google Classroom or in Canvas or whatever learning management system you use to have your students review those resource packs. From there, any of the content and information that you add, any of the instructions, appear for your students and you'll notice it is locked for your students. They cannot um, edit it. They can just um, view those information, those instructions, and begin diving within that content. So now that we've seen a resource pack as an additional material that we can use for our lesson plans, let's see how we can use a resource pack to convert into a lesson plan. So from here, once you can um, click the convert to a lesson plan button, you can begin um, adding lesson plan details within your lesson. So the first thing that you're going to look at is you can begin adding details. So this is where you'll start adding your title, your grade level, and any description. And I'll walk you through a sample lesson plan that I've already created in one second and how we can tie in those key features. But from there, you can also denote the specific subject and duration of the lesson. The objective and how you plan on assessing your students, enter any procedures and steps that you plan on taking, as well as any additional information in regards to materials, extensions, and differentiation. From there, you can save it as a lesson plan or save and publish that lesson plan to the lesson plan browse if that's something that you want to make public for everyone to see. So now let's go ahead and see, now that we've seen how to take a resource pack and create it into a lesson plan, we've seen where we can locate other lesson plans, let's go ahead and see where we can find all of our saved lesson plans. When you are in the My Content section of My Britannica, you'll notice at the top you have two tabs, so your favorites and your resource packs, and then your lesson plans. So let's go ahead and open that lesson plan. When you open it, so you can see here, I have my World War II lesson plan that I've started. You can see I've added an article and some media that's been embedded. From here, let's go ahead and begin the process of editing this lesson plan. The first thing that I wanna think about, and one of the things that we mentioned as some of the key features of our lesson plans include the materials. And where I can include the materials within this lesson plan builder within Britannica School is by using the additional information tab. If you remember when I first showed you, within additional information is where I can include any materials. You'll notice that those articles and resources that from Britannica and within my resource pack have automatically been embedded, so I don't need to list those there. But if I'm using any materials such as an interactive whiteboard, if my students are, if I need to use a laptop, oops, there we go. Maybe my laptop. From there, I might also have my students using scissors. They might need to cut something out. My students might need their notebooks, glue, and anything else. From there, there might be additional fields I want to add. So I might want to add any home extensions I have, any differentiation. So that's a great place for me to add any of those additional things that I might want to um, note within my lesson plan. But the next thing that we mentioned as one of the key features of our lesson planning is the objectives and um, assessment, excuse me. So here's where we can record our assessment, or excuse me, not our assessment, our objective. Here's where we want to think about what exactly do we want our students to be able to do by the end of the lesson. This should be co clearly communicated to your students orally at the very beginning of the lesson. And if you have space on the board, post it in a highly visible location in your classroom. Communicating the learning object objectives to your students, both verbally and in writing, serves to motivate them to work with a clear purpose in mind, and it makes it easier for you and your students to stay on target throughout the lesson. And then also you can see in this section is where you can um, record assessment, but we'll come back to that in just one second. Another key feature we mentioned was prior knowledge, and a great place to record any prior knowledge for your students or a hook is in the description location. This is a great place to set the stage by tapping into your students' background knowledge, their previous life experiences, maybe their prior knowledge, or both. 
This is great to prepare them um, for the new concept you're about to introduce. The point of the hook or this prior knowledge point in your lesson is to make connections between what your students already know and what you're going to teach them. The next key feature we want to think about then, um, that we've already been in is the assessment piece. The assessment evaluates whether or not your students met your lesson objective. It aims to provide you with valuable feedback which should drive your instruction for the next day and for upcoming units. You want to make sure that the assessment accurately reflects the learning objective and allows your students to apply what they learned during the lesson. So from there, once you have your objective, your prior knowledge, as well as your materials, you want to begin um, thinking of your direct instruction. And a great place to record that within Britannica School is here in the procedures. Here's where you can add individual steps of your direct instruction, which is the main meat of your lesson plan. It's where you present the new concept that is included within the lesson objectives. Another portion that you can include under procedures is the student practice. Student practice consists of three steps, which is the guided practice, the collaborative practice, and the independent practice, also sometimes known as the I do, we do, you do. This three-step process allows you to gradually release your students from watching you model the correct application of the concept to allowing them to apply the concept independently. And then from there, after you've done your direct instruction, your student practice, you then want to focus on closing up your, um, your lesson plan and you can add that in the procedures as well. This is really where you wrap it up. This is just a quick synopsis of the lesson where you may want to ask students to think, pair, share, or share out something they learned that period, or you can have them provide an example of the concept taught and relate it back to the objective. You really just wanna keep this short and sweet to make sure that your students have grasped that understanding of the article, or not the article, of the lesson plan before they dive into the assessment piece that you've outlined there. And then from there, you can also outline any additional resources that you want to add to the lesson plan outside of any resources um, that were included in Britannica School. So now that we've had time to dive into My Britannica, the content and my resource packs, as well as the lesson planning, let's go ahead and take some time to begin diving in and giving you some hands-on experience within My Britannica and the lesson planning. I'm gonna put about five minutes on the clock to give you some time to create a My Britannica account. From there, I want you to begin creating a resource pack of Britannica content for an upcoming lesson you plan on teaching. Use that resource pack to transform it into a lesson plan and um, publish that lesson plan when you're done. If time allows at the end of this five minutes, I want you to go back to some of those Explore Britannica tools on the homepage of the elementary, middle school, and high school page that we weren't able to dive into just yet. That includes the World Atlas and Britannica Fundamentals, but go ahead and take the next five minutes or so to begin diving into My Britannica and create a resource pack and use that to create a lesson. All right, that is the end of our time for activity. I hope you guys were able to use this time to really um, begin diving into resource packs and creating a lesson and familiarizing yourself with the lesson planning tools within Britannica School. If you have any questions about that lesson planning, since there weren't any during that time, feel free to drop them um, in the chat log now, or feel free to follow up with me via email if you have any questions as well. But, um, Let's go ahead and wrap up today's session by quickly going over one of our additional tools, which is Britannica Insights. Britannica Insights is another great resource to assist in locating information. Britannica Insights is a Chrome extension that pushes our vetted resources to the top of Google search results. So let's go ahead and look at a sample. Within this uh, Britannica School Insights page, you will have the ability to add this um, link directly to your um, Chrome browser. So you'll notice that I have this Chrome browser to the top of my screen with this Britannica thistle at the top that lets me know I have that downloaded. But when you download Britannica Insights and um, conduct a Google search, what it will do, it'll push Britannica, excuse me, Britannica results to the top of the screen um, page. Then from there, it will also give students this little window on the side that'll give them a quick glimpse into the Britannica article as well as dive into some related topics that we have articles and um, resources on. So feel free to add that to your Chrome extension for your students or for yourself to make sure you're accessing reliable resources and making sure your students aren't looking at any biased sources or anything like that as they're conducting their research. 
But before we wrap up today, the last thing I want to take time to do is allow you guys some time to um, complete our webinar evaluation. So I'm going to set five minutes on the clock for you guys to go ahead and navigate to bit.ly forward slash 225 eval. This is where you can um, give any feedback, but also record your thoughts on today's session. When the five minutes is up, we'll go ahead and come back together and wrap up our session. All right, so it looks like we have some early finishers. Thank you um, for all of you who are using the chat log to denote that you are done. So let's go ahead and continue on and let's wrap up our session today. The first thing I want to say is thank you all for joining me for today's session. I hope you all were able to learn a lot about Britannica School and how you can utilize the resources within to create digital lessons within Britannica School at all three levels. If you have any questions, again, do not hesitate to reach me at cfrance at ev.com, as well as to follow me on Twitter for any updates. My Twitter handle is at cfrancevdl for Britannica Digital Learning. But again, thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to hearing all the amazing ways that you guys are learning Britannica resources within your classrooms and within your library and media centers. And again, thank you. I hope you all have a great day.